Alrighty, Lumberjacks, welcome back. And today, we're going to be going over the advanced side of running the processor. Um, like I said, the last video that I had for showing you guys how to run the processor still covers a lot of the stuff that we're going to review today. I'm just going to show you guys maybe some more in-depth techniques, um, kind of how I do my layout. And I also wanted to show you guys uh, felling from... Uh, the processor like actually felling the trees with the processor because I didn't go over that with the other video So we'll hop right in this guy. So we have two decks sitting next to us here uh, We got this one larger one here and then one behind it. So the first thing we're gonna do is start with uh, short logs, so um, up if you hit f1 up in your top left corner you can see your cut length the second one down there I have it set to six meters. That's generally what I do for short logs. Sometimes I'll do fives, but um the sixes are kind of the sweet spot for, for loading and doing stuff as well. Um, so when you have a brand new deck, you got all your piles of stuff together here. Unlike real life, a lot of these limbs uh, in the game will not lay down. In real life, they're usually not as fuzzy looking and sticking up in all different directions. So to counter that in this game, this uh, processor head has a script on it so that when you wave it in front of the logs, it'll actually kind of wipe out the limbs a bit. Again, maybe not the most realistic thing in the world, but it's it's kind of our way of getting back at the system that's not perfect. So I just kind of throw the front of the head around until I get a nice clean spot where I can see all the ends of my logs. So that looks pretty good. Now, when you're setting up your deck and deciding how you want to cut, especially for short logs, you have to decide, are you going to put it all in one pile or are you going to um, do size sorting? I personally recommend size sorting. It's a little bit more work, but it's definitely worth it. So I'm going to go grab this first one. So this is a bit of a, a bigger a bigger size log. Now when I look at this pile, I see kind of a mixture of big and small. But it looks like the majority is going to be probably the bigger stuff for taking up the piles. So what I generally do, I'll grab it, make sure I turn my head on. So I'll drag it and I'll cut it actually fairly close to the pile. So probably about there. And then I'll run the next size. So the next size up is also kind of a... a thicker piece so I'm going to cut it off there now as you can see we're kind of getting down to the thinner pieces so what I usually do is I'll drag it right over here and I'm going to dump it right there and you can decide whether that top is something you want to add to your pile or not because so you can probably get a six out of it but again it's going to be a really really thin piece so if you don't want that in there you can you can just run it back um, back and shoot it out into the different pile there. Now for people that are wondering how I disconnect the log from the head, um, I run a mod called uh, Easy Development Controls. And in Easy Development Controls, there's actually an option when you install the mod uh, for setting your controls that allows you to drop it. Uh, if I can figure out where that is. Uh, drop tree. So left shift X, you can, I have this bound on my gamepad so that it actually drops. So I have both my run and my uh, drop tree to the same button. So every time I run these rollers, it actually drops the tree. That's why I'm, that's why I can do it so quickly. So basically if I engage the tree, so it's connected to, I'll just grab this one here. Weep. Get it. So if it's connected right now, like if I open my, if I open my, arms it's connected so that's not falling out but as soon as i roll these rollers it disconnects it and lets it go so that's how i uh that's how i do that okay so run it again again these are bigger sized pieces over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to drop that right in there having your field of view uh really high also helps so you can see the ends of the logs while you're processing that way you kind of keep everything nice and tight. Otherwise it's tricky. So again, you could get another six out of that, but I don't really want that top. So I just kind of shoot it over to that pile and drop it over there. And then swing back in. Um, some people were asking about how you get the, the swing dynamic uh, really fast, like whipping back to the pile. That just kind of comes with time and experience of running the machine. You'll get used to that. Uh, we'll put one more in there for fun. And basically what we're doing by separating these bigger logs from the smaller logs, again, that size sorting is really good for um, allowing the loader in the next stage to be able to hang onto the logs a lot more accurately. Because when you mix the big pieces with the small pieces, 
um, when you try to do grabs, sometimes it's not as effective. Again, on these with the manual cut, you can run that back and it, like if you didn't like that sharp end, you wanted to kind of clean that up, you can use the manual cut and just kind of clean that end up. And that's all stuff you can set in the controls for the manual drop on that saw. And again, we're just running out the logs, big ones to this side. And then when you get down to the smaller stuff, you can run it out to the other side. And it's really up to you what you want to do for lengths and all that kind of fun stuff too. Um, another technique that I have done, it's not the most effective in the universe because it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. That's why I don't usually teach it. But if you're feeling, if you're feeling a bit ballsy, you can go for it. Um, so multi-stemming, multi-tree stemming. So basically you grab two trees, close your primary roller so you can roll it back and forth. Now, if the, t if the ends, like the butts are not really lined up, what you can do is actually just drop the, the main saw and it'll kind of bring those up a little bit closer. So now what I do is I just manually run it out and I kind of eyeball it. So if I feel that's kind of based on where the shadow is and that, you can drop your main saw and actually cut those off together. Again, these are not going to be absolutely accurate cuts, but if you're doing really small wood and you don't really care, um, like obviously some of these are going to be longer than the other ones. They're pretty close, but they're not great. So it's not exactly saw, saw log quality for a mill, but you can do two at a time. It just takes a little bit of technique to, uh, to do that if you want. Again, I only usually do that with the smaller stuff like these little guys. Um, if you have the bigger logs trying to run two at a time, you're probably going to have a lot more difficulties. It's just nice on the small ones because sometimes you want to wipe out a bunch of them at a time. So again, I'm just going to do this whole, whole deck of wood here so you guys can see kind of how we do it. And again, lining stuff up is probably the trickiest part, um, keeping stuff in line. And I mean, I don't, it's not exactly 100% perfect when I do it either. Um, but you do your best to try to line up your piles and keep them straight as you go. Making sure you raise your head, you're not hitting your other piles. And yeah, what I do, and actually in real life when I used to do um, log sorting for like a mill yard, I do the same thing where I'll get the tree, run it out till you see till you see the end is kind of lined up. So I can line up this side, but also line up that other end. So they're pretty close, hey? And when you drop it, they'll fall pretty darn close. And same difference when you're running out your top, like that last little bit here. Run it out. Usually the last little bit will make the head tip down like that. And you can kind of run it, push it like with your head without running it, but actually just slide your head over. You can see kind of right, line it up with that little bit at the end, and then you can just kind of snip it off there. And it's pretty close. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can always butt stuff up with the loader later, but the, the better you can get it, the, the nicer your piles will be and then the less work the loader has to do. The last thing you want is having them shooting off in all different directions and making a big mess. But again, uh, having your higher FOV, so you can set that in your game settings. And what the FOV is, is your field of view. And that basically determines how, um, how much of the view you're seeing like around your cab. So if you have a really low FOV, you'll be zoomed right in looking like right at the head and you won't see this outside kind of edges. And if you have a really high FOV, it gives you kind of a fisheye view where you can see a lot more of what's going on around you. So especially for logging, um, and if you have a bigger monitor or larger screen that you're working on, um, I highly recommend a really high FOV. I used to play in a low FOV up until probably about a few months ago actually. Um, playing at uh, like a 60 FOV, which is really, really, really close uh, to the screen. So you kind of get a really zoomed in look and it's not as nice. But yeah, with that high FOV, it allows you to see the ends of your logs and it allows you to see kind of what's going on around you, especially in multiplayer when you're working with teams. Um, it's a lot nicer because you can definitely see all the different uh, different people working around you and Make sure you don't bop into trees and bop into other people. So again, we're just kind of keeping a nice little sort separately of each other. Now, in in real life, operators that I've talked to like to keep about a, a head space between the two piles. So I'm not keeping that space, obviously, as you can see, but most guys like to keep about a head's space. Me, personally, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter to me, uh, especially when I'm I'm the guy loading it. Um, I, I'm usually not too concerned about having a huge gap. 
But as long as there's a bit of a gap between the two piles, you just don't want them kind of lacing into each other because that's never good. Again, we're doing the kind of split deck thing here. We're going to run two. Now, these two logs are also different sizes, so you have to be careful while you're running them out to figure um, kind of exactly how long the logs are because one of them is going to cut a little shorter. So you see that one's getting really thin on that side. So you got to be careful running them out to make sure that that's the size you want. So we're going to put that little teeny one in there. Again, that might not be what you want. So not the most perfect way to do it, but I like multi-stemming because it gets the job done a lot quicker, especially when you're loading. It's practically pulp, those little tops that we're loading anyway. So once you get that going, it's pretty good. Pretty darn good. There we go. As you can see, you can just keep doing this and doing this and doing this and build the nice little piles. Obviously, if you're doing smaller trees like these, these are pretty thin little guys. Um, it takes a lot longer to process these and build a pile. Uh, let's see, grab a couple of those. Um, and those are pretty close to butted up, so I don't have to cut the ends. Yeah, and if you're working on like maps like Logger's Paradise, um, the trees are a lot bigger. Even on Sitka, they're quite a bit bigger, so it doesn't take quite as long uh, to build up those piles. Sometimes that saw is a little finicky. Unfortunately, I had to make that saw uh, cut really slow because if I don't make it cut slow, it makes a nightmare of uh, trying to fell trees because it accidentally pre-cuts them when you don't want them cut. So why don't we get really ballsy and we're going to try to cut three of them and see what happens. Except if you cut three, got to have them in a ball. Like They have to be in a a little triangle like that. You can't have them too far down. There we go. Oh, see, and then if you get one's going to be off, it's catching there. Yeah, so that's no good. So that's why I never, I wouldn't recommend doing more than two at a time. And just small trees. If you try doing the big stuff, it's uh, never going to work very well. I wish that saw worked a little more realistically to real life, but unfortunately we are f we're really pushing it with the things that we're doing, <laughs> doing in the logging in this game. So as much as I complain about some stuff, um, the fact that we're able to even force it to do the stuff that we're doing is pretty impressive. And we should be able to run that out one more time there. Again, these are not going to be accurately to length. They're kind of, some are shorter, some are longer. Because all we're doing is eyeballing it. We're not using a measuring system at all, which is probably not the best way to do things. And I'm actually just not going to process these last ones because we don't need to waste the time in the video. So, um, basically when you're cutting all this stuff, keeping your piles as straight as possible. You can always shim your piles up and just kind of give them a little bump with the head. Give them a little tap. Sometimes that'll help you kind of keep your piles nice and straight. If, you're, if your trees are out of alignment, there's also little techniques you can do to butt them up with the heads. Uh, so like for instance, if this one fell wrong, like it fell kind of like over here, and you're like, oh darn, that's not where I want it. I generally close these knife arms and I use these to kind of butt it. So I'll go over here and I'll just give it a, oops, I'll just give it a little whack here. If I can get, oh, I'm hitting this tree here. So let's move that. Normally you don't have a big pile of trees there either. And just give it a little tap, little tap. Oh, it didn't work out very well. But that's if it is a, a little bit out of alignment, you can do that. The other technique is to grab it. You can roll it back and forth to kind of where you want it centered. And then just drop it where you want it there. Kind of like so. And then, yeah, I'll generally go up on the edges and then just give them a little tap. Well, that was a bit of an extreme tap, but little tap. You can also just use your whole head too. Like if you leave the arms open... You can just kind of go on the sides and just give them a little bunk. Now these trees are extremely light and this head is extremely heavy. So if you hit it too hard, you're going to shoot them all out of alignment and you're going to be really annoyed by it. So just give them little light taps, little light taps. And I mean, you can do this for hours if you really want to keep your pile perfectly straight. If you're cutting on an angle, like if you're on a hill, processing down a hill onto the ground, sometimes these trees will sag to the side and they'll kind of accordion out of effect. It's hard to keep those in alignment either, but um, for the most part it works. Uh, okay, so now we're going to switch over to long logs. So I don't think I can get crazy long logs out of these. So I'm going to do 13s. I think I can get 13s out of these. And we're going to just try that out. I think these are going to be in my way here. So let's grab them. And just chuck them over there for now. 
Maybe we'll do that with these ones too, just so they're not in our way. And you can do some pretty cool stuff playing with these heads too for butting stuff up and moving things around. All kinds of techniques you can do once you get used to playing with the heads. Now long logs are a little bit... I find them more difficult to process long logs than I do short logs. Short logs are really easy to control and you're just doing little pieces. When you're doing long logs, you're kind of shooting them away and it's a little harder to line up the controls. So again, you can run your head over this thing and wipe out some of these branches just to kind of give you some a little bit more visibility. Then we're going to grab this. So we're now going to run it out to a 13. Now these logs are pretty short. So I generally try to keep it pretty close. Like about there is where I'm going to dump it. And that'll be the first start of your pile. So now we have this little bit left over in here. So you have two options. You can either chuck it into a top pile and say, screw it, I don't want to deal with it. Or you can make a short log out of it. So I generally will run these right till you're right near the tip, like almost to the end. Pretty much where you can't almost hang on to the log anymore. And I'll put it at the front of my pile and I'll just give it a little snip. And I'll just leave it there. Because you can always hide these little logs into the uh, the load later on. So you put, you know, doing cradling and stuff, which I talked about in the loading video. Uh, so again, same thing. We're running out these long logs. Now, when you're running these, you can't really see where the ends are. So the key is, if you're, if you're running them, all I can see is this end. I can't see what's going on on this end with the way I have things set up. So you always want to try to line this end up with this end of the log. And that will guarantee that you'll be at the right end on this side. So if I line that up with this log when I cut it, that will ensure that they're the exact same length because it's 13 out. Now I'm not going to get another 13 out of this, so I'm going to run a little bit short here. I'm going to try to line it up with that one, keep it a little even. There we go. And same with this one, another big log. So I try to aim it, I try to keep it straight and I try to aim it sort of to the front of my pile. So I'm always moving kind of a little bit ahead of myself. And then once I build a little bit of a deck, then you can start laying the logs on top of each other and it settles a lot better. Again, and the for people who don't know, when I look at that log, I mean, it's pretty obvious to tell that I'm not going to be able to get another length that long out of this teeny little piece of log. So you kind of get an eye for it where you look at that end and go, oh yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to get a 13 out of that. Because if I ran that out as a 13, you'd just run short and you'd have a weird top in your pile. So I generally will sort it where I'll just run it out over here again and just leave a little, little piece over there. So again, we have a little teeny piece left. That's useless to me. I'm going to chuck it over there. We can shred that and burn it later or whatever. Uh, let's grab... Uh, so these ones I also, I don't do a running out cutting. I mean, you can probably do that where you run it right out and then snip the ends. I don't do that with longs so much because I feel the lengths are really god awfully off. Short logs are a little bit easier because I can see the spacing on it and I can run it out and I know it's fairly close to accurate. But um, for the other ones, I don't do that so much. So again, now we don't have enough to make a full a full length uh, medium one. So what I'll do is I'll just bring that end up so that this butt end is as close to this end as possible. And I'll try to get as much meat off of that log as I can before it runs out. And then I'll just give it a little snip. There you go. And again, the manual snipping is a separate button that you have to configure and you can lower the saw and you can raise the saw manually yourself. Again, that's a FDR control for the saw raise and saw lower. So again, running it out, dropping it here. And we got a little piece we can play with here, so we're gonna pull that back a little. And it's up to you how far you really wanna push the length on that. That's kind of a thin little piece, but I'm just gonna throw it in there anyway. You can always hide it in the load and it's still, you know, get some wood recovery out of it. Are we gonna get a 13 out of this one? I don't know. Oh, just barely get a 13 out of that one. So, when you're first starting and you don't know the lengths, I just know this because I've been doing it long enough and I know these trees, but if you're not sure how long you can get out of the tree, just do a test run, right? Like, so if you grab a tree, if you hit F1 to see your little menu up there, we're set at 13s, just cycle through the different lengths and try to figure out what a kind of happy length is. 13s are almost guaranteed to get you at least one good long out of pretty much all the trees on all the maps. Um, anything other than that, uh, high, the higher ones, you need longer, bigger, longer trees for sure. Otherwise you're not going to get the full, the full juicy length out of it. 
There we go. So like I said, we're kind of creating a, a separate pile of medium-sized pieces over in front of us. And then these longs at the back here. These little dead trees are just barely... You barely get a 13 out of it, but you do. And as you can see, now that we have a, a heavier pile of long logs in front of us, it's much easier to pile the logs once the deck is kind of getting built. So like now, it's really easy for me to run these logs over top of the logs that are already there because they kind of slide on top of the logs and it just makes the piles a lot easier to control. Then if you want to expand the pile, all you got to do is just kind of run it in front and make a new kind of row line like that. And you can just kind of keep building, 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 building till you're almost hitting your track and then lay, lay, lay the logs on top or lay them on the, the front or back. Again, time and experience, you'll kind of be able to feel out exactly how far you can go with the logs and all that fun stuff. Uh, let's cut these big ones here last and then we'll call that good. So the other thing that I didn't really go over, I think I went over it in the other processing video, but um, so when you're running dangle head processors like this one, when you Oops, when you are, oh yeah, right, I manually did that one. When you're rotating the head, so I'm just going to cut this here. So as you spin the head, now in real life, unfortunately we can't copy this in the game, and I've never been able to make it work, so it's really unfortunate. But in real life, when you pick up a tree, if I, and, and I know this because I've done this in real life, I've actually played with one of these in real life. So if I pick up a tree, if I go to swing, in real life what happens is that head will automatically turn side to side. So like it'll turn this way or it'll turn this way because what happens is the hydraulic pressure in the head actually gets overwhelmed by the weight of the logs and it allows it to kind of free swing like this. Now unfortunately in this game, the only options are free swing or control. So. Right now, I have full control of this head by being able to push a button and rotate it left and right. Um, in real life, you have control of that by hydraulic pressure, and it also gets overwhelmed um, by the hydraulic uh, swing plate that's in it, or the hydraulic um, motor bypass, whatever the heck it is in there, and it'll swing on its own. Now, unfortunately, in this game, you, you need to push the button to swing with it. So as I'm swinging out of this pile, to line up, I need to actually hit that button to rotate it to line up my head and keep it in line of where I want. And when you're running a log, you kind of have to control it a bit and aim it. Now in real life, you can do the same thing. You just, it gives you a little bit of hydraulic pressure in real life so you can swing it. So if I just turn my whole cab right now, it's just gonna drag that tree along very unrealistically, right? Not good. So as you're slowly swinging your cab to the left, you need to actually be tapping that rotate head button so that you're almost looking at that Waratah logo uh, straight at you. And then if you swing back with that tree, you need to rotate it the other direction, tap, 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 to keep it even while you're rotating. And then while you're running the actual log, you can control it by doing very minor taps to allow it to go backwards or forwards or whichever direction you want while you're cutting it. Um, again, I apologize. I wish I could make this more realistic, but we're really pushing the uh, the limits of this game's ability to be realistic. So I generally just look at where the log's going while I'm running it. So I'll run it back here again. So let's let's just do it really cockeyed here and off to the other side. So as I'm running it, I can control it to go left and I can control it to go right and you can kind of like control it back and forth. Now, if you're putting too much pressure, this is very unrealistic, but if you're putting too much pressure on it, um, it's just gonna whip the, the log back and forth while you're going. So the key is while you're operating and running logs, especially long logs through the head, just minor taps. So if I want it to go left, tap, 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 right, tap, tap, tap. Just minor taps to control that long log while you're doing it. And the same rule applies when you're running the um, loader, if you got long logs in your grapple. Don't hold down the button because it's going to god-awfully swing those longs along around like a crazy person. So you just want to do little minor taps. So if I'm swinging, I can hold it down without a log in it and I know where my swing is going to stop. But you need to stop the swing, if that makes sense. And it comes with time and, time and experience playing the game to do that. Um, but that was the first thing I noticed in real life when I got on the machine. 
Um, I didn't really need to swing nothing. I didn't need to control the head because the head got overpowered by the the actual uh, log, and it just free swung into the direction I it you know it wanted to go. Um, in this game, we can't do that, so we do need to control the log while we spin it, which is not a big deal. You just like couple taps, so tap 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 tap. And see how that Waratah logo, like look at, as we're operating, look at this logo right here, the Waratah logo. So that's a good, that's a good tell to know where you are in your swing. So if the Waratah logo is facing this way, then when I swing, we don't want it facing this direction. We would want it to be facing straight on with us, like about there. So that's the key to know that your swing is going correctly. So I'm kind of at a 45 here when I do this. When I run the log, I have to tap, 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 and it's straight on with me. And then if I turn back, you have to tap, 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 so it's the other direction, right? And I know that's uh, a lot of playing around for new people especially, but if not, there is the fixed head processor, which is one that doesn't have any dangle head on it, so you can kind of do a little bit more aggression with that one. We're just going to snip that. Okay, so... Uh, the next thing I wanted to go over was the felling from above. And some people wanted to know how I started areas and how I actually start a area for uh, processing. So why don't we, I'm going to teleport us here to somewhere that hasn't been cooked yet. How about here? Let's try this. So this is a good spot and it's heavy trees. So heavy trees are a little bit of a pain in the butt. Like, like, and I mean heavy trees, I mean, sorry, like dense, like lots of trees, makes it a lot harder to do felling with these guys um, because they get hung up quite a bit. So very similar to what I did with the buncher, we're gonna be very similar in concept. So what I generally do, especially if it's a heavily treed area, is first of all, you wanna raise your head up. So there's a button that allows you to raise your processor head straight up, like so. Um, you're now ready to fell trees in this position. All you gotta do is open your claws, make sure your processor head is on by pressing B, and you swing it, and you actually kinda wanna hook it around the tree. So I'm gonna switch to this view, and I'm sure you guys know the concept here, but you wanna hook it around the tree. Now what I do is I grab with the primary claws, but I also grab with the secondary claws because it'll actually, it'll, it'll straighten out your head. I'm kind of at a weird angle here, so bear with me. Uh, there we go. Now, the other thing to remember is when you're felling and while you're processing, if you hit G on your keyboard, you can actually adjust this portion of your um, your uh, your hangy downy thingy, uh, <laughs> your tilt on your, uh, your arm. So you want to kind of keep it about there so it's almost level because then when I swing out, it's got a little bit of room to play. And if I swing in close, it's got a little bit of room to play. And this is the best felling position to be in. Just make sure you hit G again, and then you'll get full control of your processor back. So we're gonna switch, because we don't want to cut long logs. So I'm gonna go back to six meter logs, because that's kind of my go-to. Um, now, when you're entering an area using this technique for processing, um, it's important to remember if you're building a path of logs, because as we're cutting, we're building a, a path of logs for the forwarder to pick up generally. Now, if we're felling, we want to make sure that we have room for that path of logs. So if I'm cutting right now and I start cutting and I drop this tree, I don't want to lay it down here because this is our next row that we're going to cut. So just like we did with the, um, just like we did with the felling video, what I actually do, and I don't know if this is realistic to reality, it may or may not be. So I'll cut this tree, let it fall, and I'm actually just gonna drop it right there. The head will raise up back on its own. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut myself a little path and lay everything kind of on a, almost a 90 degree angle into the bush. Again, these are really densely populated tree areas, so it's a little bit harder to uh, keep on it and hopefully that falls nicely and you can swing right into it push the tree and I just drop it right there with that one so you're almost acting like a feller buncher I'm not even cutting these trees yet now you can get as as you know as crazy as you want cut as far into that next row as your arm will allow give it a little shove now again these are gonna start whacking on trees here now, unlike the uh, dangle felling head, you do need to control these turns as you're falling, just as I described when we're like running the, um, 
running the uh, long logs through, you kind of got to play with the rotate. So as I'm swinging, I'm tap, 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 tap. And if you get hung up, like this happens all the time, I'm actually just going to drop the tree and let it fall and see what happens here. So this is the annoying part of dealing with um, areas where the trees are really, really diversely, diversely stuck. So if your trees get stuck, you kind of either have to leave them or you got to find a way to break them down. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just, I'll run it, I'll run it out forward and see if it breaks it loose. Let's see here if I can get this. So I'm going to actually go like this. Oh, oh, pretty tricky. Sometimes you run them forward, they'll go. Sometimes they absolutely won't. So there we go. It's kind of breaking free. The other thing you can do is if it gets really stuck like this, sometimes I just get really impatient. And what I'll do is I'll grab it about here. And I'm actually just going to snip it. And then run that rest of that tree down to me. And then we can run it back into this pile here. And drop my head back down. And I'm just going to leave all of this in a big pile here. And just drop it right there. And I try to keep them closely butted up to each other because eventually I'm going to come back and process all this. But right now, I don't want to process it because if I start processing this straight across, it's going to block my little path that I have here, which is really, really not going to work out for me. So again, I swing around, making sure I'm always pointing that head in the direction I want it to fall. So if I, if I have it lined up here, it's going to fall in straight direction across from me. And again, just swing and slide and drop it right there. And we're going to keep doing this for a little bit. I'm just going to kind of go mad dog dropping here and not really care about alignment. So I'm just trying to make a little path in here. That's the key. And again, the denser tree areas, I would highly recommend just hitting it with a buncher because you'll have a lot more fun and it'll be a lot easier to clear it. Um, trying to clear stuff with this processor, <clears throat> unless it's a really sparse area, it can be an absolute pain in the behind. So again, we're going to cut and slide. And I'm just building basically a wall of trees over on this end here to the best of my given ability. And we're just going to go, I'm not going to go crazy deep in here because we'll be here for like four hours. But enough to show you guys kind of what I'm doing here. And again, once we clean up all these trees, um, we will end up coming back and processing these. But I just want to, again, make a row. So if you get to a spot where two trees are really close together, uh, actually there's two, those two are absolutely really close together. There's two different things you can do. One, I always usually go wipe out the smallest tree first. So if this is the if this is the problem tree that's in my way, I'll usually wipe out the tiny one first because it'll be easier to control. So I'll just shoot it over there. And then I'll grab the bigger one next to it and get as low as I can to the ground. Give it a snip. Let it fall in a direction. Oh, it doesn't want to go that way. Sometimes they get hung up on the bigger trees. Probably pinned up against this one, so I'll swing it. Actually, we're just going to shoot this out of the way here. I just basically want to get all these trees out of my general way so that I can come back and start a path. And just like the buncher, uh, the more space we have to work, especially coming back, the happier we're going to be. So again, here we go. We're going to go right. Let's see if we can get this to... Uh, actually, I'm going to stick it up a little more. Try to get this to fall. Oh, and that happens too sometimes where the tree will fall back. Usually if you wait, it'll actually kind of go the other way. Giants physics for you. Just being all wacky and stuff. Okay, so now we kind of have a little bit of a pocket here. So this is actually kind of nice. So a little bit of a pocket, a little bit cleaner. So now two things you can do. You can either start bunching or start cutting on that row coming back. Or I generally will actually start a new row where I uh, back all the way out. And I'll start right at the start and start cutting to my right. So let's go back here. But as you can see, now we have kind of this nice little row to drop the trees. Oh, getting caught on my stump here. Hold on. Whoop. There we go. So now it's up to you which direction you like to fell. I'm personally a fell right to left kind of guy, but because of the way we cut our trail, and you're not always going to be able to 
fall it the direction that you want to fall it, um, it can be kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm going to start going from this direction. And, oops, there we go. Beep. Uh, is my cutter not cutting here? There we go. So again, we're going to fall it into those trees. Now, it don't really matter if it gets hung up now, because I can just run it out and make space. So I'm going to go like this, and I can't really see on the side how far I am. So I don't really want to lay it right on top of these guys, but if you have to, you have to. So I'm going to start right about here, and cut. There we go. And then for the tops, I generally will just drop them right off to the side. Oops, uh, I went the wrong way. I'll generally drop them kind of like off to the side in the front. And then if I decide with the forwarder I want to pick them up, I will. And if not, I'll just leave them there and ignore it while I go. So again, grab the next one in the row. And again, we're felling into the timber. So sometimes like that one fell perfectly between those two. So you're not going to have a whole lot of swing range. So the further you run it out, the more control you're going to have. The smaller trees will be a lot easier to deal with than the bigger ones. Uh, we're just going to run both these pieces in here. Again, I also, like I said, I find it, I find processing from right to left to be the easiest way, but I've been in lots of situations where you don't have the option to do that. You have to go the other way, so sometimes you just got to go with the flow. Oh, I can't get my head to line up very nicely here. Hold on. There we go. Oh, that might fall a little weird there. Beep. Oh, that felt really weird. There we go. And again, now I'm just felling into this piece here. Very easy. And then, yeah, like I said, with your tops, entirely up to you what you want to do with them. Sometimes I'll just leave them here. Sometimes I'll kick them back. I don't generally kick them back into this row because that means I got to walk all over them. In real life, you can get away with that, but in this game, it's a little bit not. Okay, so here we go. Good example. Two trees extremely close together. Two options. One, you can run the cutting head on them and give it a snip and and basically hope to god it stays together or you can do uh the manual cut as well so i can run that that manual cut head down and sometimes you can get yeah so we got them both and then make sure you raise your head back up so now um you do if you do that you do need to fell the the head kind of yourself which is a little glitchy but that's the way she goes so i just give it little light taps and then you can actually just drop the trees and process them from the ground just like so. But that's the best way I've found for knocking down trees that are too close together. Unless you have a buncher. Then you can just knock them both down and not care. But with this head, uh, you got to be a little more careful with it for sure. And again, here we go. Perfect. And like I said, this is a great way to start off with a little road. And then you can kind of just work your way back and forth doing kind of whatever you want. Again, we got this kind of ugly top. I just kind of keep piling them back, but eventually run out of room. You can start a new pile on a new row. But as you can see from what we've done now, we've made a nice little track for ourselves. So we're not going to be running over our own material. Um, it just keeps everything out of the way. So everything's on the right. And then once we're done completely, uh, we clean this up. We can come back and process these right away kind of wood uh, later on just to kind of clean it up. So again, we'll cut down these two, and then we'll go the other direction again here. So we'll go this way, give that a snip. And again, sometimes these are hanging up. Uh, these ones are actually doing really well. I'm surprised I have not got as many hung up trees. I was going to show you guys. So if you do get them hung up, generally you can just run your head out like I'm doing right now, and it'll actually work pretty well. Uh, I'm actually just going to chuck this right in front of us, because that's kind of the end of our row here anyway. Uh, and I'm going to grab this one, and we'll call this the row just for now. And again, you can go as deep into the woods as you want. Just for instructional video here, I don't want to go too crazy. So as it's falling, give it a little give it a little whack there. These piles aren't super straight, and you really, because the forwarder has the ability to uh, butt them up pretty easily, I usually don't spend too much time trying to keep everything straight. So again, we can turn around with our short little area here. And then what we can do is we can actually start the next row. So you have two options. Because we have a pretty long arm on this guy, we can either uh, put it exactly in line with that other pile by dragging it over a little bit. So I can either cut it like this, 
and I can either run it right into that row that we were just cutting because there's quite a bit of quite a bit of length in this arm so I can swing it out pretty far if I need to or if you're kind of in a pickle and you can't get it to swing over there you can also interlace it uh, interlace your tracks a little bit here so uh, it's totally fine because the forwarder also has a very long arm like if I didn't want to go all the way out I could actually drop the trees like right about here if I want to the key is leaving enough space for your track to get by but if you have to leave a big gap there because of you know the ground or the hill or whatever you absolutely can the uh, the forwarder has the ability to reach really far so you can grab two separate piles if you really needed to there we go and again with my top i'm just gonna i always i usually lay them like crossways oops my head's going backwards here i usually lay them this way so that i know it's a piece i don't want to pick up and then i'm just going to correct this by grabbing it and we're going to put it right here Shwunk. now again i've seen tons of videos of guys uh especially in european countries doing uh, felling with uh, these types of machines and there's so many different ways I've watched guys do rows and stuff. Um, dense timber is obviously, like I said, a lot trickier than uh, doing the lighter stuff, like where you have lots of spacing in your trees. But it's up to you. So again, like I said, you got long reach. So if you really want to add to that pile to keep your piles nice, you can. And if you don't, you can lay it right next to your track. Really doesn't matter. It's up to you how you want to do that. And then I'm just going to shoot that right over there. And cut this last tree. And you can see how it's kind of a process of just kind of back and forth, back and forth. Just like the buncher. Very similar to the buncher, how we just kind of do the rows up and down. Now, I don't generally do the serpentine style with this uh, type of application. I'll just kind of go do a loop and come back and do the other side. Now, whether this is production style or not, I don't know. But this is how I've always done it in this game, and it worked pretty well. So, again, see, now we have... Because we've cleared those two rows, we have a huge space to start a brand new row to go up the other way. So now I'm not going to do the full row. I'm just going to do a couple passes here to show you. So now, again, felling back into the timber. We're going to give that, oops, give that a snip if I can. A little whack. Oh, there we go. Finally getting one hung up. Oh, not even. Okay. So again, as long as you're laying it off of your track, so you're not laying it right in front of you, make sure you cut it so you're off the side of your track so you have a little space there, and you're golden. There we go. Bloop. Bloop. And then, when you're doing forwarding, so right now, we're not... Oops. <laughs> I'm just going to lay that right there, sure. I always forget about the automatic head raise. So... This is the other thing, so I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm pretty well done with that. So again, you see the process, we go up the next row, back down the row, and you can cut that for 2,000 miles if you want, leaving rows like this. So now, when you're forwarding, um, it's gonna be the same thing. So when you're forwarding, you're gonna be going up a row, back up a row, back up a row, and you're going up and down and up and down and up and down. Because if you try to start on this end, you'll always wanna start on an end. So obviously, this end isn't where I want, what, where I would want to start trying to pick up with the forwarder because I can't drive the forwarder in between these lines that I'll be making. But on the other end, I'll leave a big gap on the other end that'll look kind of like this end where it's really open. So I would then drive my forwarder up here, pick up, pick up, pick up all the logs that are here, turn around, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up all the logs that get to the end here. So that way you're never driving over your piles. You always have some good spacing, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, this is basically the technique I use, and it's it's probably the more messy style of uh, doing stuff. But honestly, if you just want to run a processor and forwarder, it eliminates the skidding, it eliminates the buncher, and all the dragging of the wood. You process it all in the bush, you leave all your tops in the bush. Um, it's definitely, it's a cleaner method of uh, getting the wood to the landing, but it's a messier version of, you know, getting through here and dealing with all the different tree types, so... Yeah, anyway, uh, that is all the advanced stuff I have to talk to you guys about regarding the processor from both the felling state and the uh, landing state. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next one. See ya.